Welcome to Module 6, Las Vegas Math. Now, we're not going to be calculating any probabilities or odds or expectations. We're just going to be kind of understanding the concepts behind them. So in broad terms, probability is the quantification of uncertainty. To understand what that means, we need to start by formalizing this idea of uncertainty. So when we have a random experiment to describe an activity or process whose outcome cannot be predicted ahead of time, so maybe rolling a die, drawing cards, predicting the results of a football game, or forecasting the path of a hurricane, in your project this module, you'll be looking at three different unknown options and picking the one that calls to you the most and then kind of working with the probabilities that we use to predict these unknown events. So in a random experiment we have the set of all possible outcomes. The hurricane hits, the hurricane doesn't hit, you win, you lose, you win partially and these are all called the sample space. An event is a subspace of the sample space. So we're going to con concentrate in the beginning on experiments where there's only a finite set of outcomes, but in your project, you're going to be looking at the lottery, weather, or medical conditions that maybe don't have a finite set. So when we talk about sample space, we use the letter S. And so when we talk about tossing a quarter, it could be heads or tails. So this is kind of the sample space we use. We use these curly brackets to say, hey, the only things that could happen is a heads or a tail. Now, if we were to record, uh, excuse me, if we were to flip it twice, we would have different outcomes. We could have heads and a heads, a heads and a tails, a tails and a heads, and a tails and a tails. And so we could have a sample space of four different outcomes. When we have sports situations, there are sample spaces including with that as well. So shooting a free throw. So in one scenario, the player is going to shoot two free throws no matter what. In this case, one could argue what really matters is how many free throws he or she makes. But when we look at it this way, they make both win the game, miss one, and tie. Or go to overtime, miss both, and lose the game. We've got these three sample space options. The other way to look at it is failure, failure, success, failure, success, success. So we could roll a pair of dice. Now when we roll a pair of dice, things get a little more complicated. So this is an image of all the possible scenarios that could happen when we roll a pair of dice. Now if we are talking about all the different possible situations with five different candidates, there are all these different ones, A, B, C, D, E, and it goes on and on and on. And you can see that the more situations we have, the more uh, things we're using, people were calculating, dice we're using, it gets really, really big. The sample space gets really, really big. So we use those dot, dot, dots to say kind of, and so on. So moving into 6.3, we're going to talk about, well, what is probability? And I like to think of probability as likelihood. So when we talk about probability, there we can talk about fractions, we can talk about decimals, and we can talk about percents. And it's all the same thing. So let's talk about percents because that's usually what people are most comfortable with. So if something is 0%, it's impossible. It's not happening. And 100% is it's certain. These are the probabilities. So if we have a 50% situation, it's half and half. It's maybe going to happen. And then things get a little more complicated in this space in between. So if we were to talk about 20% or 40% likelihood, or 60% or 90%. So if you want to take a moment and think about some weather examples, if I was to say 90% chance of rain, are you going to bring a raincoat? What about if I said 40% chance of rain? So we make decisions on a regular basis about probability, about likelihood. Maybe we use percentages or fractions or decimals, but we do this all the time when it comes to weather, when it comes to cost or budgeting, all different kinds of things in our life. And you're going to be looking at these kinds of numbers in your project and making decisions about the likelihood of winning the lottery, the likelihood of a storm coming, and how people use these uncertain numbers to actually make some pretty big decisions. So I invite you to look through the slides that are posted on Canvas 
to go through a little bit more about probability, probability theory, different events that can happen, the vocabulary that comes with that. We're going to skip through these on the video, but again, asking you to look through. This is what we were just talking about. The probability is from 0 to 1, 0 and 1, or 0% and 100%. So you're not going to have negative probabilities. It's either impossible, you can't have a negative uncertainty. Independent events are things that don't have an effect on one another. So one thing could be rolling you know, a six and picking a king really doesn't have anything to do with each other. So when you're looking at independent events in your project, you might realize that these probabilities don't actually affect the outcome of the other. Now, when we talk about risk, this is going to have a little bit more of a play. So let's talk about poker. So there's five card stud poker and five card draw poker. So in both of these games, the player ends up with five cards, but there's a really big important difference. In five card, five card draw, the order doesn't matter, but in stud, the order that they come up is very relevant. And this is a huge difference in the statistical probability of the likelihood that you're going to get what you want. So the reason is that in a draw, the cards are dealt down, but in a stud, the, the only the first card is dealt down and the remaining four cards are dealt up. Don't worry, you don't have to know poker to do the project or anything like that. The main deal is that the players can assess the relative strengths of the other players' hands as the play, game progresses and play their hands accordingly. So they're determining what's the likelihood of this card coming up, if I see this card, if I don't see this card in the deck. So counting the number of five card stud poker hands is a direct application of the multiplication rule. So if you take a peek here, you can see all the different possible hands. But in the draw, it's a little more difficult because the cards, the order in which the cards are dealt is the same. So this time you only have 120 different ways the same set of five cards can be dealt. So now you're looking at one draw hand to 120 instead of this really big number. So this is the idea of permutation versus combination. The number of ways that things can be done depends on if it's ordered or unordered. So ordered selections, the stud poker hand, selecting the same objects in a different order gets you something different. Think about a locker combination. Let's say your locker combination is 20, 30, 40, it does matter the order that you put it in, and because of that, it's more difficult to guess. Now, the thing that's annoying is I said locker combination, but a locker combination is actually a permutation. They should call them locker permutations because the order matters. Combinations is when the order doesn't matter. So the Florida lottery, you just need a dollar to play. And so why are lotteries a bad investment? Maybe this is what you're going to focus your project on. So in the Florida lottery, one gets to select six numbers from one through 53. To win the jackpot, those six numbers have to match the winning numbers in any order. So again, any order is going to help you. It's going to create it more likely because if you had to get it in exact order, it's more complicated. So since a lottery draws just an unordered selection of one out of six, it's going to be this combination formula. So how many different combinations are there? Almost 23 million. So when you choose your project, maybe you want to focus on lottery. Maybe you want to focus on how weather predictions are made using statistics. Maybe you want to focus on medical conditions and those statistics. But that concludes module six slides.